Hello, my name's Rajin, and I broke a resolution. Hello friends, and welcome back to another video on my channel. Today I'm going to talk to you about all of the books that I borrowed in January. If you watched my 2021 reading goals video, you will have heard me say this. I really, really want to borrow a book, and I haven't yet returned one. I can borrow one, but not two. I definitely did not do that this month. However, I also said this, that I should never have more than 20 library books in my house, ever. And I do currently only have 16 books out, so I haven't broken my resolution too badly as of yet. The other thing is that I have also read some of these books and they are going to be returned. Um, I just needed to talk to you about them in this video first. I don't think I'm doing too badly. I'm breaking the letter but not the spirit of the resolution, as they say. So I have 12 books here that I'm going to talk to you about and I'm just going to talk you through them in order of the size of the book because that is the order in which they are stacked. Some of these books are for my February reading challenge, um, which I don't tell you about the challenge till the video comes out, but maybe you can guess from some of the books that are in here. Some of them were for my January reading challenge, which again, I'm not going to tell you what it is in this video, but it will be the next video coming out will be my vlog of that challenge. So let's begin. The first book I have here is Sing Unburied Sing by Jessamine Ward, um, which is a National Book Award winner. Um, this is a book that I've heard so much about, so many people rave about this, and I have never read any of Jessamine Ward's writing, so I'm definitely excited to get to it because I know people rave about this and also about uh, Men Re Reaped and Salvage the Bones. I know people love her as a writer, and it's not too long a book either, which I like. Um, <laughs> I'm getting into books that are sort of around the 300 page mark at the moment. I feel like that's the perfect length for a novel for me at the moment. An intimate portrait of a family and an epic tale of hope and struggle, Sing Unburied Sing examines the power and limitations of family bonds. Rich with Ward's distinctive lyrical language, it brings the archetypal road novel into rural 21st century America. So I absolutely love lyrical, descriptive language, and um, I'm really excited to read this. It's been blurbed by Marlon James, um, and I love Marlon James, so that is exciting. Next, another one that people have been raving about since it came out, and that is Homegoing by Yaa Jassy. So one of my goals this year was to read more fiction set in Africa by African authors. Yaa Jassy is a Ghanaian American author, and this is set partially in Ghana and partially in the USA. Effia and Essie, two sisters with two different destinies, one sold into slavery, one a slave trader's wife. The consequences of their fate reverberate through the generations that follow, from the Gold Coast of Africa to the plantations of Mississippi, from the missionary schools of Ghana to the dive bars of Harlem. Spanning continents and generations, Yaa Jassy has written a miraculous novel, an intense heartbreaking story of one family and through their lives the story of America itself. So this is historical fiction but it's following multiple generations and I think from what I've heard you kind of jump through the generations each time and you don't go backwards. Um, so I'm very interested in reading that although I do sometimes have trouble with multi-generational um, books because I don't think feel like you get to know the characters well enough. I've heard so many so much praise of this and it's been blurred by Zadie Smith so um, hopefully I will love this one as much as everyone else seems to. Then I have The Siege by Ishmael Kadare and this is not for any challenge or any reason. I just picked it up because it came across my desk at the library um, and I read The Doll by Ishmael Kadare last year and I absolutely loved it um, and so I wanted to read this one as well. Um, I am trying to read more books in translation this year and this one was translated Ishmael Kadari is an Albanian writer and this was translated into French by Yusuf Rioni and then translated into English by David Bellos. So it's a doubly translated work which is really interesting. I wonder if that will have a huge effect. This is also um, historical fit fiction set in Albania. The people of Alba Albania have refused to negotiate with the Ottoman Empire and they know their fate is sealed. As they take refuge in a fortress in the mountains, the Ottoman army arrives and prepares to lay siege to the Christian citadel. So 15th century um, historical fiction, which is something I've been enjoying lately, but set in Albania, so something entirely different. And I know I like Ishmael Kadari's writing. Then we have Tidelands by Philippa Gregory. Um, so I have slated Philippa Gregory a couple of times in the past, but I am trying one of her books. Um, and that this one is set in 1648, and the country is in the grip of a bloody civil war. The king is in exile, and the people have learnt to keep their allegiances secret. In the tidelands of Sussex, where land and sea join together, the villagers are focused on survival, and those who are different are regarded with suspicion. So this is about a small town on the south coast of England um, and about um, the civil war and um, the sort of conflict between royalists and uh, parliamentarians and also between Catholicism in a um, and between Catholicism and Puritanism um, and it's about a woman who is a midwife and healer and obviously because it's Philippa Gregory a witchy woman. 
I do like books with witches, but we will see how well I enjoyed that one in my wrap up. Next I have Wintering by Catherine May, which I did a reading vlog reading this, which I will leave in the cards above if you would like to go and check that one out. Um, and this is um, a non-fiction book. A, a poignant and comforting meditation on the fallow periods of life, times when we must retreat to care for and repair ourselves. Catherine May thoughtfully shows us how to come through these times with the wisdom of knowing that, like the seasons, our winters and summers are the ebb and flow of life. So it's kind of a memoir about Catherine May's own experience with depression and with um, feeling the need to withdraw and with struggling with uh, chronic illness as well, um, but it is also about how um, the natural world and people with deep winters deal with their winters and the prep and planning that happens and then the coming out of the other side um, and I will talk about that more in my wrap up. Then we also have Burial Rites by Hannah Kent. Um, this is set in Northern Iceland in 1829. A woman condemned to death for murdering her lover, a family forced to take her in, a priest tasked with absolving her, but all is not as it seems and time is running out. Winter is coming, and with, the, and with it the execution date. Only she can know the truth. This is Agnes's story. So um, I love books set in isolated locations where there are a small community of people, especially when it is cold. Um, I have a whole recommendations video of my top 10 books set in isolated locations. Um, so I'm definitely very excited to read this one. And it is one that I'm reading for a challenge. Then we also have... After the Flood by Cassandra Montag and I love this uh, cover. I think it's absolutely stunning. Um, so this is, in the wake of the floods, Myra and her daughter Pearl have learned to survive. They make do, find reasons to live despite the chaos around them, find contentment. But there is a constant longing that plagues Myra that began seven years ago when her husband Jacob took their daughter Ro and left Myra behind. When a chance encounter reveals that Roe might be within reach, Myra and Pearl pack up their lives and begin a dangerous journey into the heart of the sea, risking everything and everyone for the chance of, at a family that may never come again. This sounds really interesting and it sounds like it's going to be quite plotty and really gri gripping, which is interesting. I hope that the writing is as beautiful as the cover. Then we have The Death of Comrade President by Alain Mabaku. And this might seem like deja vu to some of you who've been around for a while because I borrowed this last year and then it was in my library unhaul, I'll leave in the cards above, um, where I took it back to the library unread and now I've got it out again. <laughs> what am I doing to myself? But as I mentioned earlier, reading more African fiction is one of my um, goals for this year, so I'm going to make an attempt with this one because this one had already captured my attention. And this is historical fiction set in um, the Republic of the Congo. In Point Noir, in the small neighbourhood of Von Gu, on the family plot where young Michelle lives with Maman Pauline and Papa Roger, life goes on. But Michelle's everyday cares, lost grocery money, his endless daydreaming, the whims of his parents' moods, their neighbours squabbling, are soon swept away by the winds of history. In March 1977, just before the arrival of the short rainy season, Comrade President Marianne Ngwabi is brutally murdered in Brazzaville, and not even naive Michel can remain untouched. At a stroke, he learns the realities of life and how much must change for everything to stay the same. So this is told from the perspective of an 11-year-old child, which is an interesting one, um, and I am intrigued to learn about 1970s Congo and the coup that happened there. Then... <laughs> I also have A Single Thread by Tracy Chevalier, a book that I know lots of people really loved when it came out, I believe in 2019, um, by the writer of The Girl with the Pearl Earring, which I have read, but as I've mentioned before, was a long time ago, so I don't remember. I don't know if I'd actually like it now or not, but anyway, this is another piece of historical fiction set in 1932, um, when the losses of the First World War are still fe keenly felt. Violet Speedwell, mourning for both her fiancé and her brother, and regarded by society as a surplus woman unlikely to marry, reserves to escape her suffocating mother and strike out alone. A new life awaits her in Winchester. Yes, it is one of drafty boarding houses and sidelong glances at her naked ring finger from younger colleagues, but it is also a life dealing with independence and opportunity. Violet falls in with the Broaderers, a disparate group of women charged with embroidering kneelers for the cathedral, and is soon entwined in their lives and secrets. As the almost unthinkable threat of a second great war appears on the horizon, Violet collects a few secrets of her own that could just change everything. So, um, intrigued? It sounds like it's going to be a lot more tense than you would think for a book about embroidery. 
another surprising one, The Giver of Stars by Jojo Moyes. Um, this is another piece of historical fiction set in the 1930s also, but this time it is about Alice Wright, a stifled, restless woman who makes an impulsive decision to marry a wealthy American, Bennett Van Cleve, and leave her home and family behind. But stuffy, disapproving Baileyville, Kentucky, where her husband favours work over his wife and is dominated by his overbearing father, is not the adventure or the escape she hoped for. That is until she meets Marjorie O'Hare, a troublesome woman and daughter of a notorious felon the town wishes for to forget. Marjorie is on a mission to spread the wonders of books and reading to the poor and lost, and she needs Alice's help. So this is based on the true story of Pack Horse Libraries in Kentucky. It is set in Appalachia, which is a region that I am interested in reading more about. So we'll see what I thought of this when my January challenge video comes out on Friday. Then I am, another one for the January challenge video is the those those who are loved by victoria hislop which is another piece of historical fiction set in the 1930s oh no 1941 i apologize after decades of political uncertainty greece is polarized between the right and left wing views when the germans invade 15 year old themis comes from a family divided by these political differences the nazi occupation deepens the fault lines between those she loves just as it reduces greece to destitution she watches friends die in the ensuing famine and is moved to commit acts of resistance in the civil war that follows the end of the occupation, Themis joins the communist army, where she experiences the extremes of love and hatred and the paradoxes presented by a war in which Greek fights Greek. So as you may know, if you've watched some of my other videos, I'm not hugely into World War II fiction unless it's telling a different perspective. And the Greek Civil War is a different perspective. I didn't even know that the Greeks had a civil war after the world after the Second World War. So I am intrigued by that. I love Greece. Um, it's one of my favourite countries that I have been to. So um, I am interested in reading a book set there. And then finally, a book that has been hugely hyped and was in my anticipated releases video, but I knew was going to be one that exploded, and that is The Prophets by Robert Jones Jr. Um, so this came out very recently. So this is the only new release. Isaiah was Samuel's and Samuel was Isaiah's. That was the way it was since the beginning and the way it was to be until the end. In the barn, they tended to the animals, but also each other transforming the hollowed out shed into a place of human refuge, a source of intimacy and hope in a world ruled by vicious masters. But when an older man, a fellow slave, seeks to gain favour by preaching the master's gospel on the plantation, the slaves begin to turn on their own. Isaiah and Samuel's love, which was once so simple, is seen as sinful and a clear danger to the plantation's harmony. So this is historical fiction, I believe set in the south of the US, um, during the period of slavery. It has been blurbed by Ocean Vuong and Marlon James and Casey Lehman, um, so it's got really, really high praise and it's one that I know a lot of people were anticipating this year, so I'm looking forward to reading that one as well. That is all 12 books that I borrowed from the library this month. I am definitely excited to be getting to all of these and hopefully it won't take me too long. I won't be um, holding on to them for as long as I've held on to some of the others last year. Please let me know in the comments if you are interested in reading any of these or if you have read them. I'd love to know what you thought of them when you did. Um, I'm definitely excited to get to them very soon. Thank you for watching. Please remember to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and to subscribe because I put out new videos every Wednesday, Friday and Sunday and so I will definitely see you again very soon. Bye bye!